at 6 p.m. on Thursday here in Korea. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Hwang Jie. And these are the top stories we're following at this hour. President Park Geun-hye pardons thousands of people, including 14 business tycoons, a step she says is designed to kickstart the economy. China weakens the yuan against the greenback for a third straight day, fueling concerns of a global currency war. And while the tumbling yuan is also sending shockwaves through the Korean market, local policymakers decide to take a wait-and-see approach and hold the key rate steady at 1.5%. Hoping to boost morale and revive the economy ahead of the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japan's colonial rule, President Park Geun-hye has issued a general amnesty. This is only the second time the president has exercised her pardon power since taking office in 2013, and this time she pardoned only a handful of business tycoons. Our Che Yusan starts us off. The list of more than 6,500 people granted special amnesty on Thursday includes people who committed petty crimes for their own survival and the owners of small and medium-sized enterprises. Fourteen of the people are conglomerate executives, and the only conglomerate head to make the list is SK Group Chairman Che Tae-won, who is serving a four-year sentence for embezzlement. The government has impartially selected 14 businessmen, including SK Group Chairman Che Taiwan, to either spare them from their remaining prison terms or lift certain restrictions in their sentences. Contrary to expectations, neither Hana Group Chairman Kim Seung Yun nor LIG Next One Vice Chairman Ku Bon Sang were on the list, likely because neither of them met the requirements. Among the business people, we did not include people whose sentences were issued recently, those who haven't served enough time of their prison term, those whose crimes were committed during the current administration's term, and those who failed to pay fines. Also, no politicians or public servants who are in prison were pardoned. According to the Justice Minister, President Park Geun-hye had stressed that the Korean people should be able to relate to the latest amnesty as she's aiming to help boost morale and revive the domestic economy. Prior to Thursday's announcement, President Park, who had pledged not to abuse her amnesty power, said that she expects the pardons to give ordinary citizens and small business owners a chance at a comeback. In pardoning the business leaders, the president said she expects the amnesty to help with efforts to revitalize the economy and create jobs. Aside from the roughly 6,500 people who were pardoned on Thursday, another 2.2 million people were either granted parole or released from certain administrative restrictions so that they and their business operations can get back to normal. Che Yusan, Arirang News. And in response, the business community has welcomed the pardon of convicted businessmen. They vowed to take lead in reviving the economy by creating jobs and expanding investment. But some experts question whether the pardons will help lift the economy. Our Kim Min-ji has more. The Federation of Korean Industries said they will use the amnesty as an opportunity to focus on the economic revival and development of the nation. Still, some were disappointed with the scale of the special pardons. The Korea International Trade Association said it was smaller than expected, but added the answer to problems like growth, employment and welfare lies within the firms. The Trade Association also stressed the need for the business community to come together and foster a friendly business environment and create quality jobs. Experts also have high hopes the pardons will breathe life into the sluggish economy. The Korean economy is slowing and young people are struggling to find jobs. Thanks to the return of corporate leaders, companies will now be able to make swift decisions on investment and job creation. Also, as the pardons include leaders of small and medium-sized companies, it will help spur growth. SK Group, whose chairman was pardoned, vowed to focus on creating jobs and expanding investment to help the economy get back on track. Hanwha Group was disappointed its chairman was not pardoned, but pledged to continue contributing to the economy through investment and job creation. But not all experts were pleased with the pardons, considering the recent havoc surrounding Tebols, namely Lotte's family feud and the Korean Air nut rage incident. 
Corporations say that without their leaders, it's hard to run the company. That in turn is admitting the authoritative role of their leaders. This goes against the government's pledge to reform the country's conglomerates. Che added it remains to be seen whether the pardons of businessmen will actually have an impact on the economy, as there's no evidence supporting a correlation between presidential pardons and economic revitalization. Kim min Arirang News. Shifting gears, President Park Geun-hye, who had delayed her U.S. trip due to the recent MERS outbreak in Korea, has been invited by U.S. President Barack Obama for another visit in October. The two leaders are expected to talk about a wide range of security, economic, and global issues, and underscore the strength of their country's alliance. Our Hwang Sung-hee reports. President Park Geun-hye and U.S. President Barack Obama will meet for a summit at the White House on October 16. It will be their fourth such meeting since President Park took office in 2013. On the agenda are enhancing the bilateral alliance and boosting cooperation against North Korea's nuclear program. The leaders will also touch on issues like the environment, energy, space, health and cybersecurity. The presidential office of Chongwade expressed hopes that the summit will open new horizons for cooperation between the two countries. The White House said President Park's visit will underscore the strength and breadth of the U.S.-Korea partnership. The South Korean leader had postponed her trip to the U.S. in June to tend to domestic concerns over the spread of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, in Korea. The outbreak killed 36 people, and the government came under fire for its lax initial response. The earlier-than-expected announcement of the summit is raising speculation that President Park could attend a war victory ceremony hosted by China next month. South Korea and the U.S. have usually given a 20-day notice for presidential visits. The presidential office is expected to make a final decision on the China trip next week. Hwang sang Arirang News. North Korea has called for an end to regular drills between Seoul and Washington with its usual bluster, but it continues to remain silent on last week's landmine blast at the border. Our Connie Kim has the details. North Korea has vowed to retaliate against an upcoming round of regular military exercises between Seoul and Washington, calling the drills a declaration of war. In a statement on Tuesday, the North's Committee for the Peaceful Reunification of Korea called on the Allies to halt the drills and threatened merciless blows that could escalate into an all-out war on the peninsula. The statement also said the North is ready to counter any kind of war the U.S. might start, even a nuclear provocation. The warnings are similar to those issued by the North in the past. Seoul's defense ministry responded by saying South Korean forces would take immediate action to defend the country against any bullets or projectiles coming across the border. Seoul and Washington are set to kick off the two-week Ulti Freedom Guardian exercise on Monday. The computer-assisted simulation exercise is designed to train South Korean and U.S. forces to deal with a range of current and future threats. The drills begin amid heightened tensions between the two Koreas after a recent landmine explosion that injured two South Korean soldiers. Pyongyang has yet to issue a response after Seoul's defense ministry concluded the North was behind the attack. Seoul has responded by resuming its propaganda broadcasts along the border for the first time in 11 years. It has also vowed further retaliation and continues to call on the regime to apologize for its actions. South Korea's defense chief will also discuss the matter with a visiting U.S. Defense Department official on Friday in Seoul. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Now, over at the National Assembly, lawmakers adopted a resolution condemning North Korea for a recent landmine attack. We now turn to our National Assembly correspondent, Park ji for details about today's session. ji give us the details. Hi, ji The resolution condemns North Korea for the attack and urges the regime to apologize and punish those responsible. It also calls the attack a military provocation in clear violation of the armistice agreement that ended the hostilities of the Korean War. It was approved by the Parliamentary Defense Committee a day before today's full assembly session. It also calls on the South Korean government to respond sternly and swiftly to any further provocations from the North. And Ji-won, lawmakers also voted in favor of an arrest motion for a former opposition party lawmaker accused of graft. That's right, Ji-hae. 
137 lawmakers voted in favor of arresting Park Ye-chun, a three-term lawmaker who left the lip who left the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy Party earlier this week amid charges he took nearly 300,000 U.S. dollars in illegal political funds in exchange for influence peddling. The motion was adopted by secret ballot with 236 out of the 298 assembly members present. Before the vote, Park spoke to the full assembly. He acknowledged all the charges against him and said he's immensely sorry for causing the parliament and the public harm. Park's arrest was subject to parliamentary consent as sitting lawmakers are immune from arrest while the assembly is in session. With the vote, he will now be stripped of his immunity from arrest. That's all I have for now. I'm Park ji Won reporting live from the National Assembly in Seoul. Back to you. All right, thanks, ji Won, for that report. And moving on to some other news, China has devalued its currency yet again for a third straight day. The yuan was pushed down another 1.1 percent against the U.S. dollar on Thursday. That means it's been lowered a total of 4.6 percent since Tuesday. The pace of decline was tempered, however, after the central bank said there was no basis for a further currency depreciation. According to the China foreign exchange trade system, the guiding rate for the yuan now stands at 6.4010 for one dollar. The devaluations follow a slump in Chinese exports that dropped 8% in July from a year ago. Given the gloomy economic data, creating speculation that China might take further action to tackle a possible slowdown, the move is jolting Asian markets, and Korea is one of the hardest hit. Our Han Daun has the details. Korea's credit default risk hit a six-month high as China lowered its currency value for three consecutive days in an effort to bolster its slowing exports. The market research firm Market said Thursday the credit default swap premium for Korea's five-year foreign exchange stabilization bonds reached 63.1 basis points, the highest since February. That's a 22 percent jump from last month. A CDS premium is often used to measure the credit worthiness of a company or country. Among the 53 nations surveyed, Korea had one of the highest risk premium increase rates, second only to Thailand, in the period from Monday to Wednesday after China announced its currency devaluation. The risk increase rate was especially high among emerging Asian economies, with Malaysia trailing Korea with a 13.5 percent jump, followed by Indonesia, Kazakhstan, and the Philippines. Market watchers say Korea's risk premium hike points to Korea's heavy dependence on the Chinese economy, especially on China-bound exports. 35 percent of Korea's total exports are China-bound. This means the two countries share an export structure in which China's economic troubles could become Korea's. The sharp increase in the CDS premium could also hurt foreign investor sentiment to a certain extent. The CDS premium increase rate was relatively low for other developed nations, including the U.S. at 3.9 percent, the U.K. at 2.8 percent, and Japan with one of the lowest figures at 0.6 percent. Han Dan, Arirang News. Now, the risk from China caught the attention of Korea's monetary policymakers, but that was not the only uncertainty they had to take into account, like the possible U.S. rate hike leading them to keep the key rate steady this month. Our Shin Se-min reports. While gauging the impact of China's currency devaluation move, Korea's central bank kept the key rate unchanged at a record low of 1.5 percent for the second straight month. Following the unanimous monetary policy decision on Thursday, the central bank said it is taking a wait-and-see approach, with concerns mounting over the devalued yuan as China is Korea's largest export market. The effects of China's yuan devaluation are complex, but it's difficult to say which is more important when it comes to competitiveness in exports and the possibility of capital outflow. We will have to see how the situation turns out. The top central banker added that external factors present higher uncertainties than domestic variables, as they have shown little signs of improvement while consumer sentiment in the country is inching up and the industrial output rebounding. Experts say China's move might have earned Korea some time. 
With China adding concerns to the global financial market, the U.S. Federal Reserve may adjust its timing for increasing its base rate. A rate hike from Washington may add more pressure on the BOK to raise its interest rate. But experts point out Asia's fourth largest economy has not been able to reap significant benefits despite the four key rate cuts it has carried out so far. Now, with China in the mix, the bank may have more time to determine when the right time would be to push its key rate upwards. Given the mounting global economic uncertainties, market watchers say another possible rate cut could still be in the forecast. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. And that brings us to the end of our newscast. More updates coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time, so stay tuned and goodbye for now.